We live in a time where there is an endless supply of Glock knockoffs and Glock clones. A few of them out there really stand out in my opinion. And today we're going to go over one of those. And that is the Anderson Manufacturing Kiger 9C Pro. Let's get into it. All right, for full transparency, I do have a small relationship with Anderson Manufacturing. They have sent me one other thing before, the Frontline 11.5, and I will go ahead and link that right here and put a link to that below so you can see that review, actually two of them uh, as well. However, I don't have an affiliation with them from a monetary standpoint. I don't make any money off of doing reviews for them. I'm not paid or anything like that. And if you're not new to the channel, you know that Everything I say is honest, my opinions are my opinions, and it doesn't matter what my relationship with the company is. So Anderson is really known for their ARs, especially their budget ARs. They've since come out with their Frontline series, and the Frontline series is a great, great rifle. Um, it's been a couple years now that they came out with the Kiger. This one being the 9C Pro. Now, some of this is going to be repetitive as I have talked about these frames many times in the past. These frames are made by St. Croix Tactical, SCT, uh, and then they're rebranded as Anderson Kiger frames. So with that said, let's get into some of the specifications about this pistol, what I like about it, what I may change about it, and what I think the advantages to this are over some others out there. So I mentioned the frame. So the frame on these is my second favorite frame of all Glock aftermarket frames out there. Um, I've been very vocal about that. I've talked about it many times. And like I said, I've gone over this frame in other reviews uh, as well. So it is a polymer frame. It is G19 size. It has a 1913 rail here. This causing it to be a little taller so it won't it's not Glock holster compatible, although it is Polymer 80 holster compatible, and there are a couple other companies out there that fit it. Now, some of my favorite features about this frame is, number one, the grip texturing is second to none. This has phenomenal grip texturing. Although I would put the grip texturing in a couple more places than what's on here, the grip texturing is great. It's in a lot of really good spots, and it really grabs the hand as when shooting. So a few other things about this frame is that it has a really, really good double undercut on the trigger guard here. Now the very bottom of it has texturing and then the base of the trigger guard or nearest to the grip has a super high cut in there. It's higher than a lot of them that I have seen. And it's also rounded up or beveled up real well to help keep from some of that Glock knuckle. Even when a lot of other frames are undercut, it still has a corner here and you end up with a little bit of Glock knuckle. They've beveled this around to help to keep that from happening. Now moving up from there, there are beveled glove bevels here going into the trigger guard and they're very deep, nicely done glove bevels there. Moving up from there are these thumb ledges, these, these gas pedal type thumb ledges. And this is where I think some other companies maybe don't do as good a job others do, but this is very well textured, nice, uh, uh, flat, aggressive thumb ledge. You can really dig into there and control the gun. Now, moving back from there, there are these bald spots in the frame here where there isn't any texturing, although it is sunk in. So, as far as a lot of people complaining about like the, the width or girth of a Glock frame, the grip of the Glock frame, they've done things in this to help narrow that down, leaving some, some, some sort of a hump, sort of a raised area here where your palm actually goes because your palm does sink in. And so that raised area or sunken in area here allows for the grip to sink into your palms the way it should uh, without any sort of gapping. Now, I do sort of wish that there was some texturing here. And that's mainly for one-handed shooting because I don't rest my thumb up here like this. I rest my thumb here when one-handed shooting and I just sort of wish that there was some texturing there. <sighs> Speaking of that particular area, it is a Gen 3 style frame, which means it is one-sided mag release. It does not have 
the swappable mag, swappable mag release, although they did put texturing on this mag release. Now the front and back straps have vertical lines instead of granular type texturing. And those lines, while they, they almost look like they're not gonna do anything, but those lines, because of the rotational uh, the rotation of the pistol while you're trying to shoot it, they do grip your hand up and down. And moving back from there, there is a beaver tail. There is some beveling on the back side of this beaver tail. Um, and the beaver tail is a little narrow. Uh, one of the things about these frames that I have always criticized, whether I'm talking about SCT frames or, or Kiger, is that for somebody with hands like mine, I tend to get slide bite a lot more easily with these frames than I do uh, an OE Glock frame or even some other frames out there. Um, that's probably the biggest downfall to this frame is that I do wish this beaver tail was maybe a little bit wider and a fuzz longer and uh, boy, uh, you just couldn't, couldn't hardly beat it. So some of the things in the frame is this trigger. So this trigger is very Glock-esque. It has a little bit a little bit lighter break, a little bit lighter break, and in my opinion, a little bit more forced reset than a standard Glock. It's a fuzz lighter break and more of a forced reset. And I'm able to shoot this gun pretty darn fast. And then of course up from there is the slide stop slide release. And this is, I think it's a G34 style. Anyway, it's that hump style extended slide release. Um, and these work pretty good. They're not my favorite. Um, I do like the tango down ones that have more of a ledge on it as opposed to that little button head that's on there. Uh, but these do work extremely well. And that brings us to the slide. Now, the slide on this is really cool. It's got a couple things that I would change, but it's super cool. So the slide has really great cuts on it. It's a stainless steel slide that's DLC coated. And of course, everything's uh, Glock compatible as far as parts go. Uh, it's got some good angled serrations back here, some fancy cutouts here, and then these massive windows in the front right around that fluted barrel. Now, before we get to the barrel, I wanna talk about these cutouts. These lightning cuts in this, are really neat and it does help to lighten the slide they're a little big and what i mean by a little big is that when they're very capable of racking from the front right of manipulating the slide from the front uh, but they're so close you know the, the slide is so close to the barrel that after a couple mags and you grab this barehanded it is hot it's boiling hot up in there so these giant holes, these giant window cuts are sort of a double-edged sword. Uh, they're super cool to look at. They do a great job at lightening the slide. Uh, however, it does expose a lot of that barrel and a lot of the heat to your hand. Now, there is also a window cut in the top and some nice sort of jeweling edges, some, some beveled edges on the very snout of it and across the top here. And of course, they're topped off with a set of metal, uh, uh, metal, uh, suppressor height or red dot height sights with anti-glare cuts in the front and rear sights. And as you can see here, I have the Gideon Optics Alpha on here uh, and it is an RMR cut red dot. All right, so let's go inside to the barrel. Uh, it's a fairly standard uh, recoil spring. The barrel is also a stainless barrel and it is also DLC coated and it is fluted. Not just fluted, but it has these really cool cuts on the top chamber area. Um, the fluting seems to work really well as far as dissipating heat through those lightning cuts. <laughs> but yeah, the, 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 the barrel seems to do a very, very good job. It's very accurate. Uh, and it also has a really deep crown in the very front of it, nice beveled crown in the very front of it. So if you happen to drop your gun or whack it into something or something like that, you're not gonna screw up that rifling. All right, so before we go any further with this video, I wanna give a big shout out to Murphy's Guns. Murphy's Guns is the FFL that I use for everything, for suppressors, for transfers. I shop there, great people, real helpful awesome selection and good prices as well. So check out Murphy's Guns here in Tucson if you're passing through or if you live in the area. Big appreciation of the support Murphy's Guns has shown the channel. Just showing some love back. 
Let's get back to the video. So my experience with this pistol thus far, I'm at almost a thousand rounds, just over 800 rounds on this gun. I have yet to lube it and I have yet to clean it. I didn't even lube it out of the box. I didn't put a single drop of oil on it and it has run and run and run and run. Um, it has fed with every magazine I've given it, which is Magpul, ETS, um, OE Glock and KCI. I think that's it. I think that's all the mags I have uh, put through this. It has run two mags of Hornady Critical Defense or Critical Duty, uh, which is the ammo that I carry. Uh, and it is again with all of the things they have going on with the frame, the lighter slide and all that, it is very controllable to shoot. Not a whole lot of recoil impulse. I have been doing some stuff from concealment with it. I've been using my Nightfall Customs uh, Polymer 80 uh, appendix holster and the Works Outlier M6 appendix holster as well. It fits both those holsters really, really well. So what would I change about this? Again, I, I went sort of through some things as I was telling you about each individual part. What would I change about this? Well, first and foremost, if you're gonna build a Glock clone, uh, it should fit Glock holsters. However, it's not that uncommon for these guns to not fit Glock holsters. Um, some do, some don't. It's one of those things. But I do wish that any uh, Glock clone or knockoff would fit Glock holsters. It would just make life so much easier. Again, the beaver tail, if it was a bit wider, a bit longer, fantastic. Uh, the This, with the window cuts, they don't need to be smaller. That's just something to be aware of that if you do rack like this, if you do charge your gun like this, there is some heat sink there. And uh, those big windows do allow a lot of this dissipating heat off the barrel to get transferred to your meat mittens. All in all though, subjective aside, this has been a completely reliable pistol thus far, and I will continue shooting it. And once I get a thousand rounds uh, problem free, I will also add this to my carry rotation. It's been a great gun. It, again, is very controllable to shoot. It's a nice aesthetically looking pistol, and it comes in at a good price. Now, much like anything Anderson Manufacturing, they price these to sell. You get all of this. You get the great thumb ledges, the awesome texturing, the glove bevels, the double undercut, the really nice slide, DLC coated everything, stainless barrel, nice crown, uh, metal, metal suppressor height sights, everything with uh, uh, anti-glare cuts. Just a lot of thought went into this pistol. And for the YouTube sensors, I'm about to talk about price. And it's not to sell this. I don't sell firearms on this channel. I don't sell regular goods on this channel. It is just to relay information to the viewer. So this being the 9C Pro, it comes in on Anderson's website for a little over $500. Um, you can find them on other websites for as low as 460, 450, 460, 475, which I think is a phenomenal deal for what you are getting out of a single pistol. Now the Kyger 9C, which is the non-optic cut, doesn't have all the, the fluted barrel, doesn't have the cuts in the, uh, in the slide up here. Uh, a lot of, I think everything else is pretty much the same, but the regular 9C is coming in around, if I remember correctly, right around 350, 380 uh, for that one at various websites. So either way you go, if you're not an optic guy, great. If you are, the 9C Pro exists and I think you're getting a lot of pistol with a manufacturer that is very well vetted uh, for, the, for the money. So at the end of the day, if you're balling on a budget and you want a tricked out Glock, you want a Glock that is all Glock parts compatible and things like that, um, and don't mind, say, buying a Polymer 80 holster or something like that, this, I think, is probably a really good option. It's been very reliable super shootable, nice to shoot uh, since I've had it. And uh, yeah, again, it's backed by uh, a, a great company, all made in the USA, everything you were looking for, for a good price. I appreciate Anderson sending this out to me. It's been great to shoot. There will be another video down the road when I get more, uh, when I get more 
rounds on it and I'm going to go ahead and change this trigger out to either an Overwatch or Apex trigger. Those are the two triggers that I use and everything. Um, not that this one's bad, but like usual, it could be just a little better. All right, thanks for watching everybody. Don't forget to hit like, share, subscribe. Share this video, especially in your gun groups and things like that because it's the only way that my videos will get out to the public because YouTube refuses to share them. I have been getting messages and messages and messages lately of people saying, do you still make videos? Yes, I still make videos. People aren't seeing them. YouTube is hiding them. We all know YouTube has been screwing with gun channels a lot lately and uh, we're all victim to YouTube. So help creators out by sharing and making sure that our videos are seen by the wider portion of people. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you later.